Um, Mr. Speaker, I know that it's protocol and important to thank the chair of the committee and the ranking member, but today I have to convey my very sincere and heartfelt thanks to Chairman Berman and ranking member Ileana Ross Layton. And of course, I have to also thank my dear friend Zach Womp, who came to me many months ago and proposed that we offer this resolution together. I believe this is a historic day and I'm deeply humbled. And other than the day that I had to come here before the House to talk about the uh, collapse of our bridge in Minneapolis, I feel the most sense of emotion and, uh, and weight and gravity today. I also want to point out that this, this resolution that, that comes to the floor today takes place during a very special time for people of the Muslim faith, which is the month of Ramadan, a month of reflection and fasting. And based on uh, the, this resolution coming to the floor of good things as well. The passion that my colleague, Mr. Womp, and I share for this resolution may strike some members as unusual, but it shouldn't. Indeed, as members of Congress on different sides of the political aisle, Mr. Womp and I may not always agree on policy, but we are two men who have come together as people of faith to highlight what we both believe are historic interfaith developments within the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faiths. In late 2007, 138 Muslim scholars from every sect in Islam representing communities uh, of, uh, in, in countries both friendly and hostile to the United States sent a letter to Christian leaders everywhere declaring common ground between our faiths and seeking dialogue among leaders of two traditions that represent nearly half the world's population. Responding to that letter, some 300 Christian leaders, including many leaders in the United States, declared, November, November 2000, declared in November 2007 their appreciation and support for this historic outreach. In March 2008, the Vatican announced that the Pope uh, had invited these scholars to a first ever summit, which will meet in Rome November 2008. I believe the mutual respect demonstrated by all participants, participants in these efforts holds tremendous transformative power, not only for relations between Christians and Muslims, but also for Islam's entire relationship with the West. I believe it is in the best interest of the United States to support and encourage those efforts so that the world knows that our nation stands with those people who reject extremism and violence and hate and embrace reconciliation. Let me read from the resolution. It is the sense of the Congress that the United States encourages the many people of faith around the world who reject terrorism, reject radicalism, reject extremism, and join with these people in similar efforts to build a common bond based on peace, reconciliation, and a commitment to tolerance. Furthermore, the United States appreciates the, those voices around the world who condemn terrorism, intolerance, and genocide, and ethnic and religious hatred, and instead commit themselves to global peace anchored in respect and understanding among the adherents of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, the three Islam Abrahamic faiths. Today the world knows too many people, today our world knows too many people who are divided rather than healed by faith. I speak for myself, but I'm sure most members of the House would agree that our religious faith is a great source of strength and, that is, and it has the transformative effect of bringing people together, not pushing them apart. Mr. Speaker, I believe this resolution will serve to send a strong message to people everywhere that members of the House stand in solidarity with the members of the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faiths as they confront ancient and modern divisions that so that peace may prevail. And it is brought up during a particularly special month for me. I urge my colleagues to support this truly bipartisan resolution. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time.